What's going on you guys? Welcome back to RC Overload. I hope everybody is doing fantastic and having a ton of fun in the hobby. I am back making videos for you guys and I am so excited to start this year off right. Now, as you guys can see here, I have a little bit of an unboxing for you guys, or more or less, I should say, an overview video. <laughs> Atomic RC has sent us over an early release of their brand new Barbed Wire 2 boat. This is a 17 inch ready to run brushless racing boat. Now, as far as I know, this should be released here at the end of January, but today we're gonna take a look at all the new features this has in comparison to its original version, the original Barbed Wire. Now, as a little side note, I honestly have never uh, drove or operated the original Barbed Wire, so I can't say for certain how much better this boat will be in comparison to that boat. But without further ado, let's get right into it and show you guys what's in this box and show you guys all the cool stuff that this new boat has. So now taking a look on the outside of the box, you are going to find, like I had mentioned before, that this is the new Barbed Wire 2 17 inch ready to run brushless racing boat, which is now capable of reaching speeds of 30 plus miles per hour. Whereas before, I believe it had said that it was only capable of reaching 25 on the original version. This newer version now comes with a new 3S LiPo battery, an aluminum rudder, and an upgraded water-cooled brushless motor. We'll get more into all of the specs here as we take a look at everything here, but I'm just kind of doing a quick overview of the box. As far as the specs go, the overall length of this is actually 16.5 inches, the beam is 4.75 inches, and the overall weight is just a little more than one pound, whereas before the original version was just under one pound. So once you get inside of the box, you are gonna find everything that you need to make this ready to run. The only thing that you're gonna need to do, obviously, is charge up the battery. However, Atomic RC has provided a basic wall charger. It's nothing substantial, but it is something to get you charging if you don't have an aftermarket charger already. We're now putting out uh, 20 watts of max power with a two amp charge rate. So although it's still not a very quick charge time, it's still quicker than the previous version. Now this basic wall charger can also handle two to four cell LiPo batteries, although they only provide you with one 3S LiPo battery. So now talking about the battery that comes with this, this is a 1300 milliamp 3S 75C discharge battery, and it does have an XT60 connector already attached to it. Now you'll also notice that they attached Velcro to the backside of it as that's how you will install it inside of the boat. It doesn't use straps, it just has a Velcro piece built in. Now as far as I know, in comparison, the original barbed wire only had a 2S 1250 milliamp LiPo battery. Although you're still not really gaining much more of runtime over the previous setup, it is significantly more powerful. As a little side note, I'd highly recommend picking up a couple of these because of the short amount of runtime. Now, also as another side note, I don't know the actual runtime for this, uh, but I'll know better once we actually get this out and running. The other couple of things that you will also find in this box is obviously the instructions manual, which does go over all of the basics of the boat, how to set your trim tabs, how to set the receiver, how to set your transmitter, and everything else inside of it. You'll also find some AA batteries, which are actually Duracell. That's the first time I've ever come across a ready-to-run RC that doesn't have some cheap branded AA batteries with it. So that's actually kind of cool. <laughs> Now the next thing you guys are going to come across, obviously, is the 2.4 GHz transmitter, which is nothing more than just a basic, ready-to-run transmitter. It does seem to be pretty decent, there's no cheap plastic feel to it, and does have all of your basic controls. On the top, you'll notice that it has your steering reverse switch, the throttle trim and steering trim, and your steering uh, left and right adjustments. Now getting back to the transmitter real quick, uh, the foam grip is actually pretty stiff, but it does feel comfortable in your hand. It's not really all that squishy. Like I said, it is kind of stiff. The only downside to this remote is it does kind of feel pretty big in my hand. Although it's not terrible, it may be a little uncomfortable for smaller hands. But again, you might have to just try that. Everybody's a little bit different when it comes to the transmitters. But for me, it, it does kind of feel a little big overall in my hand. Now, obviously, the last thing you are going to come across once you get inside the box is the boat itself. Oh, and the stand. The stand that it comes on will also be in there. Just want to put that out there. 
<laughs> the stand is just a plastic basic stand, but hey, at least it comes with a stand, right? So talking about the boat itself, as you can see, it's now a yellow and white toned color. Uh, and the first thing I noticed right away when holding this boat is the overall quality of the plastic. It's a very solid and thick plastic on this thing and doesn't feel cheap, honest to God, by any means whatsoever. I feel like I could throw this thing and not worry about it breaking or whatnot. The other thing that I noticed right away too is the graphics design on this is actually extremely well done. Most of the time when I come across ready to run vehicles in general, the plastics just were like slapped on really quick. But this, to be honest, looks like they took their time putting on the, pl uh, the graphics. You almost can't tell from this kind of distance away that they're actually stickers and not painted on. But they are stickers. Now, the other thing that I noticed right away was that the water pickup for cooling down the motor in the ESC is actually picked up from the underside of the boat here on the back side. Whereas some boats, you actually see them more on the rudder with a little hose that comes off the rudder and goes inside of it. This was actually picked up and molded right off the underside of the boat, which in my opinion actually isn't a really bad idea considering this allows you to go a little bit more shallow in the water and if you dig up the rudder a little bit, you're not picking up dirt and debris that might get the whole system clogged. So instead, it's right on the hull of the boat where it'll be more towards the surface. The outlet port is also on the left side of the boat, and you'll see a little rubber nozzle that sticks out where the water will come out as well. Also on the back side, you'll notice the antenna. Now the antenna that I noticed on this actually does slide up and down a little bit, so I'll have to see if that becomes a problem with allowing water in. At first, I thought this whole thing was kind of sealed off, but having that slide up and down pretty easily, eh, we might have to take a look at that and silicone that up a little bit if that becomes even a problem. It may not at all. Now, moving on to the very back side, you will see your adjustment tabs and fins. Uh, the fins themselves can be adjusted to your preference of how you want to drive, how you set up the boat and whatnot. They do supply an Allen key and some basic tools in this as well. The rudder is, like I had mentioned, aluminum, but the actual base that this uh, rudder attaches to is a hardened plastic. Doesn't really feel like there's any flex whatsoever in it, so it does feel pretty solid. The prop is a plastic nylon prop. There's nothing special there, but it is a two-blade design now. So in order to get on the inside of the boat, we have our little latch here on the back side, which you can turn in either direction to allow the canopy to come off. Now the canopy itself is again of the same plastic as the rest of the boat. Again, it feels pretty solid. There's not a lot, if any, flex to this whatsoever. And overall, the canopy does feel like it sits nice and tight against the actual hull of the boat uh, with the foam little insert that's in here to help protect it from getting water in. So we'll actually have to see how good that, that foam does at keeping the water out. So now looking at the inside of the boat, you'll see that there's actually a lot of room on this thing. And that's because they use the 9 gram micro servo, uh, a very small four channel receiver that's in this. Uh, so you could technically add more stuff if you wanted to. I've seen some people add lights to their boats, little LED strips to give it a little glow in the water, which is actually pretty cool if you ask me. <laughs> but it, like I said, it does come with a four channel receiver. Uh, you'll also notice the new upgraded brushless motor, which again, as I mentioned, is 40% larger over the previous. Now, I don't know the actual size of the motor because they don't list it anywhere on the box or in the instructions or even online at the moment. So I can't really tell you how much bigger or what size motor this, actual, this thing actually has. Now, the other thing that you'll notice when looking down the hull of the boat is the ESC. Now, this ESC has been upgraded to a 30 amp ESC with a BEC installed, whereas the previous version only had a 20 amp ESC. So now looking at the plug that's on the ESC, they didn't really give a lot of room on that uh, wire to allow you to play to plug it in and whatnot. However, I am seeing that the ESC is Velcroed in and there is a little bit more space. So I may be able to pull that ESC a little closer to the back uh, if I find out that the battery doesn't quite reach that plug easily enough. But that may affect the overall weight distribution of the boat. But let's, uh, let's throw the battery in here and take a look at that. So now you can see that now that I've got the battery installed in there, 
uh, you do actually need to move the battery up a little bit more forward in order to make that connection to the ESC. So like I had said, I may need to adjust the position of both the battery and the ESC in order to make this work, uh, make the connection a little bit better. Also, lastly, this battery, like I mentioned, is held in by Velcro. Um, it doesn't have a strap or anything, so it does kind of rock back and forth a little bit. But as far as I can tell, that battery is in there pretty good. So we'll have to see over time how well that battery actually stays in place. For all I know, it may not have an issue whatsoever. I haven't tested this out or anything like that. Now, the last thing that I did just notice on this is on the very back side of the boat, on the left-hand side, you'll see a black rubber plug. That's if the water does end up getting inside of the hole. You can just pull that little rubber plug and allow the water to drain out. So I did want to mention that to you guys, that there is a drain plug on this if that happens. So now overall, this is actually a really, really light boat. Like I mentioned, it's just a little more than one pound, but it... It sounds solid. It feels solid. It, it, for this size of a boat, I'm actually quite happy with it. Uh, so I am very excited to get this out and test it and see how well it actually does and make some really cool videos for you guys. Uh, considering this year, I did want to start getting into boating a little bit more. This is a perfect start to that. And yes, I do still have the Spartan and we will be getting that out here very soon. Uh, unfortunately, it is currently 20 degrees outside and the lakes are all frozen over where I live here in the Northeast. So it may be either a few days or a couple of weeks before I finally get this thing out to test it and see what it's all about. Now, one thing I do want to mention is if you guys do end up wanting to look at getting upgraded batteries for this, there does seem to be a significant amount of room to get a slightly larger battery. As far as right now, I don't know what's the maximum size you could possibly put in this. Uh, because overall, the weight displacement may change significantly depending on how much bigger of a battery. Uh, but like I had said, as you can see here, there is some significant room in order to make that actually work if you wanted to get a slightly larger battery for more runtime. Also, in case you guys have a question about it, I'm not entirely sure what the uh, ESC is capable of going up to. I don't know if it can go up to a 4S or what other batteries it can also handle. So as far as right now, I don't know that information, but once I find out what that ESC, what the specs are on that ESC inside of this boat, I'll try to put all the information that I can down in the description box for you guys when it comes time. All right, guys. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for the overview here on the new Atomic Barbed Wire 2. Honestly, I am actually pretty excited about it. The boat itself feels pretty solid, pretty durable. I mean, it has a lot of cool features about it. Uh, especially since, you know, the hull is pretty solid. It's got some, uh, the aluminum fin on it, a larger brushless motor. It's now 3S LiPo. I'm almost kind of curious how fast we actually can make this thing go. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if you have any questions or comments about this, feel free to post them down below in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you guys as quickly as possible. But don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and feel free to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So until next time, you guys, I'll see you on the next RC Overload. Later.